What if one zone on your sprinkler system isn't coming on or isn't shutting off, but the rest of your system's working okay? Could be your valve, could be your controller, or it could be your wiring. How do you tell which? Today, we're going to help you troubleshoot your malfunctioning zone. Dwayne Smith here, your irrigation product specialist. Let's get to it. In order to properly troubleshoot some of the electrical components, you will either need a solenoid activator chatterer, or you could use a multimeter, also called a voltmeter. For this video, we will be using the Pro 50 Activator Chatterer by Armada. An activator is a tester that's specifically designed for irrigation, and it makes this task much simpler. We have an almost identical video to this one where we go through the same process using a voltmeter. If you don't have access to an activator chatterer, go and check out the other video that uses the multimeter. So let's start troubleshooting. Problem one, a zone won't stop running even when the controller is set to stop watering. If the watering is definitely off at the controller, then this kind of issue is something that would probably not be caused by a faulty controller. It's nearly certain that's a valve issue. Let's talk about what that looks like. If your zone should not be on, but the sprinklers in that zone are on or they're sort of on, maybe they've got water dribbling from the top of several heads or a few heads are popping up, and not just for a few minutes after the zone shuts off, it's happening continuously, then the valve for that zone is not closing all the way. So in that case, you're going to have to find and replace the valve. Problem two, one zone isn't coming on all the way. That may look like several heads not popping up within the zone, perhaps none of them are, but there's water seeping from the top of some of the heads, then most likely your valve isn't opening all the way. If that's the case, you're going to need to find and replace that valve. Although another possibility is that you've got a broken pipe. You'll almost certainly have a wet mushy spot in the yard and maybe even a puddle. You'll need to turn off the water at the backflow or water meter and then repair that break. Problem three, one zone won't come on at all. This is the most difficult problem to diagnose. I have seen one case where the customer's module was not properly seated and there was an error code on the controller. If you have a modular controller, make sure that the module is inserted properly and locked into place. Also, make sure it's not a programming error. Go through the program to determine that the zone is scheduled to run and for how long. You can run a manual cycle and skip ahead to that zone. Most controllers will have some sort of indicator on the screen to show that the zone should be on. If the controller is showing that the zone should be running, but the sprinklers in that zone are not coming on at all, this could be a problem with the controller itself, the wiring between the controller and the valve, or the solenoid on the valve. We'll need to do some electrical troubleshooting. Let's talk briefly about what happens when a controller activates a valve. To activate a zone, the controller sends 24 volts of electricity through a lead wire to the solenoid on the valve. The solenoid is connected to both the lead wire and to a common wire. The common wire is also connected to all the valves in your system and heads back to the controller. That completes the circuit. When the solenoid is activated, it opens up the valve, sending water to the sprinklers. So let's check to see if the controller is working properly. Grab your Pro 50, hit the power button. You should see this screen. This is a 24 volt system. This is only going to work on a regular controller, not a battery operated one. I'm gonna hit the arrow key to the right to indicate 24 volts. Now I've got this screen. I'm testing for VAC, so I hit the F3 key under VAC. I'm gonna put one clip on the common and one on the zone, which I'm testing. Start a manual cycle for that zone you're testing and I should see around 24 volts. In this case, it's a little over. It's not unusual. There will be some voltage loss in the wiring depending on how long your wiring is to the valve and the gauge of the wire. So a little extra juice here at the terminal is not a bad thing at all. This terminal is definitely working. If the terminal is not working, that means your controller is malfunctioning, or if you have a modular controller, it could just be that the module's bad. You could try replacing that module. If you have another terminal that's not being used, you could switch the wire from the non-working zone to the available terminal and reprogram the controller to run that zone instead. Even if you can make that work, you will still probably have to replace the controller eventually because it's on its way out. 
but this will buy you some time, maybe even a few seasons. If you don't have another terminal available, and assuming it's not a module issue, you're going to need a new controller. It's a great time to upgrade. If you've got a basic model, you might want to check out a smart controller that can change its programming based on local weather stations, and you can program it with your smartphone. So check out the choices on sprinklerwarehouse.com. Assuming that your terminal is working perfectly, your problem is either the solenoid on your valve or the wiring. To test the wiring and the solenoid, we will be testing resistance. Push the arrow key on the Pro 50 until you get to this screen. Press the F2 key underneath the Omega symbol. Leave the clips on the terminals. The readings will jump around a little bit and then settle. I've got 42 ohms, that's good. A 24 volt system like this is going to be between 20 and 60 ohms. If you've got a battery operated system that you're testing, that would mean that the solenoid on your valve is DC latching. You'll see around five to 10 ohms. Resistance ratings for the valve you have are available on the manufacturer's website. If the screen is showing this, three lines, you've got a break in the wiring or a bad solenoid. If you've got a short in the system, you'll see something like this, less than five ohms. It may even read zero ohms. It means that you've got wires touching somewhere that shouldn't be touching. So let's assume that you've got a bad report here. The Pro 50 has indicated either a break in a circuit or a short, then we'll need to move out to the valve to continue troubleshooting. Out here at the valve, disconnect the wires from the solenoid from the wiring coming from the controller. We're gonna test the solenoid a few different ways you don't need to do all of this, just pick one. The most direct way is to turn on the solenoid. Put the clips on the solenoid wires. Press F3 for a 24 volt system and F1 if you've got a battery operated system with DC latching solenoids. From this screen, press F1. The zone should come on. Let it run for just a few seconds and F3 to turn it off. One note here, if you have a master valve on your system, the water is not gonna come on unless the controller is currently running the zone you're testing. The master valve precedes all the valves in your system and nothing can run without it on. Another option is to chatter the solenoid. Now, you don't want to chatter the solenoid with the water on. The water to your system should be turned off at the backflow or at the water main if you're chattering. Press the F2 button to chatter. It sounds like this. And yet another test you can do would be to test the resistance, just like we did at the controller. I'm gonna press the right arrow button and then press F2 underneath the Omega symbol. Because this is a 24 VAC system, I'm looking for something between 20 and 60 ohms. 43 ohms, that's good. Less than five ohms, or if you get like the three lines like this, then the solenoid is bad. If this were a DC latching solenoid, five to 10 ohms would indicate a good solenoid. So if you've got a bad solenoid, you need to replace either the solenoid or the entire valve. Usually the price difference between a replacement solenoid and the entire valve is usually just a couple of bucks. I would go ahead and buy a new valve if I were you. If you're just replacing the solenoid, you'll need to find out the correct one for your model of valve. The valve solenoids are not generic. There's a specific one you need. If you're replacing the entire valve, any valve that's the same type and size will do. Now, when I say type, I mean inline, anti-siphon, angle. This is an inline one, uh, and it's a one-inch valve, so you can replace it with any one-inch valve that's inline. You don't have to match model or brand. Any brand works with any controller, etc. You do need to buy a DC latching solenoid version if your system is battery powered system. And finally, let's test the wiring. Connect the clips to the wires coming from the controller. Start the zone you're testing. Set your Pro 50 to test for VAC like we did earlier. And we're looking for around 24 VAC. Once again, if you get three lines, you've got broken wiring. If you get something really low, it could be a short, 
Check your connections in the valve box. Hopefully that's the problem. Try making fresh connections and always use waterproof wire connectors. If that doesn't fix it, you may need to run new wire, which is a real pain. If you happen to have multi-strand wire coming into the valve and one of the strands in the multi-strand is not being used, then congratulations, you've just hit the jackpot. Somebody's already run your new wire for you. Just swap to an unused wire and swap the wire back at the controller. If there is another valve nearby, an option is to use a doubler. A doubler operates two valves using only one lead wire. That could potentially save you a lot of work and headaches, so check out that option. Hope this helps. Questions? Chat with one of our incredible customer service agents on sprinklerwarehouse.com. They really do know their stuff, and they'll get you squared away. Get everything you need for that next landscape project from Sprinkler Warehouse, a proud member of the Heritage Landscape Supply Group. Your success is our heritage. Sprinkler Warehouse, America's most shop sprinkler store. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for helpful tips, tutorials, and general sprinkler instruction.